Before you add other graphic elements and shapes to your projects, it's important to consider exactly when and where you'd like those objects to appear. So for this project, I want to go to the timeline and actually clean things up a little bit before we add our text. So select layer 1 and press Command A to select all the layers. If you press the U key on any layer, it'll automatically show you any parameters that have keyframes or animation. Now if you press the U key again, it'll go ahead and collapse those layers. If you notice in the middle of my project, I have a bunch of layers and I'm just gonna click and drag with my current time indicator to see what those are. And that's all these different graphic elements. Now I know I already like how these fade into the scene. What I wanna do is control the number of layers I'm seeing in my timeline. So I'm just gonna deselect one of the layers just by clicking over here near the eyeballs, making sure not to click on one of the visibility eyeballs. And I'll click on layer four and scroll down and hold down shift and click on layer 10. Now I have all the graphic layer elements selected. I just wanna hide them from the view, but I don't necessarily wanna delete them out of my composition. That's where you wanna use the shy button. It's right here to the right of the names. Looks like a little guy popping over a fence. If you click on the shy button for all the layers that are selected, notice his little eyes disappear. Now, in order to actually hide him in the layers panel, you need to click on his larger button here in the top of the layers panel. So let's click on that. And now we've hidden all those layers. If we scrub through our project, now you can see everything is still there. It's just disappeared out of my timeline. So I do want to add text, but I do want to consider where I'm placing that text. So let's scrub down the timeline here. Okay, I do want to add text next to this word training. Now also as I'm scrubbing, I'm realizing I have one bright plus button right here. And when that was originally designed, it was designed to appear right next to the word training. It's kind of meant to mimic the H plus design over here with the plus in the upper right. So anytime you have a layer with animation already applied, like keyframes or anything else, you can still slide that layer down the timeline and those keyframes will stay in place. So select layer three and press T to open its opacity. Now I know that's where the keyframes were residing, so that's why I just pressed T. You could also press the U key and it would show you the opacity because that's where the keyframes live. Now click on the layer and drag to the right. If you hold down shift as you drag, it'll snap to the endpoint of the training layer. Holding down shift as you drag is a great way to snap many things to different things. For example, if I click on the current time indicator and hold down shift as I drag, it too will snap to the beginning of that layer or snap to the next keyframe. Now, if you haven't done so, click and drag down to around frame 813. Notice now I have the word training there and the plus element. Now, since I can't see that, I'm going to use a key command, shift command H. That'll hide any control handles of layers that I currently have selected. Now we're finally in a place to where we can add text. So I want text to appear here that says day one, but it's kind of interesting how we already have text in the scene, but we haven't even learned how to add text. That's because we imported this element as a layered Photoshop document. Now I know in Photoshop that text was editable, but in After Effects, it came across as a normal layer. See if I select layer two and I open its different transform options under transform, you can see I have my normal X, Y position options and my anchor point and scale, but I don't have any other ability to edit this. Well, if I go up into the layer menu and choose convert to editable text, I could convert that Photoshop layer to fully editable text. Now it's appearance changed. And if I open layer two again, you can see that I had layer styles applied. Sometimes when you have layer styles applied to text and it's imported into After Effects, when you make that text editable, Ken, sometimes it'll disappear. Not all the time, but sometimes. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and collapse layer two. Now, remember when I hid those control handles? If you press Shift Command H, you can reveal them again. Now, since I've converted this text to editable text, the anchor point is here on the left-hand side. Here, I'm gonna scroll up so you can see it better. See, it's on the left-hand side. Now, that's because the text is left justified. To learn about the justification settings, let's go ahead and add another layer of type. I'm gonna go up and click on the text tool in the tool panel. You can also press Command T or Control T on Windows to open that up. Now, if you look over to the right, you should see auto open panels. That's selected. As long as that's selected, if you look in the lower right corner of the interface, you'll see your character panel and your paragraph panel. 
The character panel determines the typeface that you'll use, and the paragraph panel determines the justification. So let's just click in our comp panel. Let's click up over here and type the words day one. Press enter on your keypad to set the text, or just grab your selection tool by clicking the tool panel. Now this text is way too small, so if we go to our character panel, we can click and drag on that parameter to crank up the size of that text. Now I don't want it to be the same size as the training text, so I'll just make it a little bit smaller, maybe around 30 points. Now I could also just click in the value, just like anywhere else in the interface, and type the value and press enter on my keypad to set that. Now notice this text is left justified as well. If I clicked the center text, now the anchor point is set up around the center. If we press W to grab our rotation tool, I can click and drag on that layer and it will rotate around its anchor point. I'll just press Command Z to undo. So we've added the text where we'd like it to appear in the timeline. But if we look in the timeline, notice my magnification has changed. I'm not seeing the full 10 seconds. That's because this paragraph panel appeared. If I want to zoom back out of my timeline, I can click on this little Time Navigator End button and drag to the right. Now I can see where my text layer is and my current time indicator. Notice when I added the text, it created text and it added it to be the entire length of the project. Well, I'm going to quickly and easily trim this to start with the other text. The way I can do that is just by hovering my mouse over the left edge and then clicking and dragging. And you guessed it, hold down shift after you start dragging and it'll snap to the start point of the other layers. Now, if I want to add the same fade in to that text that's on the plus layer, I can click and draw a lasso around those two opacity keyframes. If you press Command C or Control C on Windows to copy, then you can select layer one, press I to move the time indicator to the start of that layer, and then press Command V or Control V to paste. So if we scrub through our animation, moving the current time indicator, we've now added our second row of text, and it fades in with the other text. So remember, when you add text, pay attention to where its visibility is within the layer hierarchy, but also where it lives within the timeline itself, so you know exactly when it's going to appear in your animation.